So we're doing challenging questions for Christians from a random street epistemologist. And it would take us to question number five. If you learned that the pastor you met on the plane was no longer a Christian, would this concern you? Not concern for him necessarily, but in terms of the path you went on in your life. <laughs> now, this question kind of perfectly underscores what I said in my last video about these questions. There's a hidden precept in the question. It's not really hidden all that well. Would, not, would you be concerned about the path you have chosen in life? See, you're doing yourself a disservice by assuming that we the Christians are one or two challenging questions or one or two challenging, you know, one or two things are going to occur and that will set the ball rolling and our faith will be trembling. You know, we're just teetering on the verge of non-belief. All we need is that one spark. That may be true of atheists who were Christians who became atheists. But that's not something that is generally true of, of Christ, most of the Christians I know at all. There are people there who are struggling with their faith, sure, and one or two challenging things might set them on a path of you know, really questioning the reality of God. But for the most part, those, are, those people are relatively rare. So speaking for me in just answering that question, no. Nobody, no other person, if the Pope himself came out tomorrow and said, you know, Matt Dillahunt, he's making a lot of sense to me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start broadcasting on the atheist experience from now on. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even phase me. Wouldn't even, I wouldn't go, oh my gosh, I better look. Do, do I really believe what I believe? Uh, you may find this hard to believe, but I have already, I am thoroughly and a hundred percent at intellectual peace with my convictions about the reality of God. And there are very, very, very few things that would realistically challenge my faith in any meaningful way. And I can speak for a lot. I doubt that that would be realistically challenging to Stephanie and most of the Christians who are going to be answering this question. I doubt that that's a realistic challenge too. You're not doing, you are doing yourself a disservice if you assume that most of the Christians you meet are like, I'm not, I don't know for a fact that you were one of the fundamentalists who became a Christian, but I know a lot of Christians who were. And yes, that was a real thing for them. And that does happen, but you're doing yourself a disservice, especially if your goal is deconversion. You're doing yourself a disservice if you come at Christians assuming that their faith is, you know, their faith is really, really weak and all they need is a couple of pushes in the right direction and then they will realize the truth. You know, that's not, that's not a really, really fruitful approach. Um, it does happen. There was a girl on Twitter uh, two and a half years or so ago who came onto Twitter to uh, preach the gospel actually and lo and behold she be, or she came, and lo and behold she became an atheist and but she was rooting her faith in young earth creationism and you know the the fact that the bible's 6000 years old and she was firmly committed that if that were if somebody poked holes in that that was going to really challenge her faith ditto for Josh from Digital Hammurabi he was on my channel I interviewed them uh, same idea he was really, really committed to one aspect of his faith. And he was, you know, so powerfully committed to that as the truth that if you started to poke holes in that, yeah, that would challenge his faith. But most of the people I know aren't like that. And they aren't really in this position where they're kind of teetering on the verge of, you know, all they need is a couple of pushes in this direction and then they'll start really questioning and become an atheist. That's not really a realistic idea about where Christians are at in their walk. That's all I'm saying. It's not even, it's not, it's it, the type of people who are in a position like that, it's relatively rare. I don't know anybody like that in my church. And I'm not saying they're all on fire believers necessarily because they aren't, you know, they're all over the place in terms of their actual commitment. But people who are like right on the verge of, you know, becoming an atheist or deconverting and all they need is a couple of nudges in that direction. That's relatively rare occurrence. Um, nobody, almost nobody you meet who you're asking these types of questions to is gonna be one of those type of people. I mean, these are Christian apologists, you know? I mean, yeah, there is such a thing as a Christian apologist who thinks he's going to be set the world on fire for God and turn around three years later and he's apologia making videos, it's apologia, for example. And I think Seth Andrews, um, I think the same idea. He was a, a relatively well-known 
you know, Christian preacher or something like that on YouTube. I don't know the full details. Uh, hopefully get him on my show one day. Ask him. I'd love to find that story out. And Paul, Paul too. Yeah, Paul, you're welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Um, but you, you're kind of doing a disservice. And you're too obvious. Like I said, there's too obvious. You are all but telling her that the path she is on in life is wrong with the que how you are framing the question. That's not genuine inquiry. It's really not, not even close. It's, you know, I already know that you're wrong. Let me ask you a question to prove to you that you are wrong. And then, you know, then, the, then the, so some of the atheists go so far as to get, you know, get really uptight if you get mad at you if you get defensive. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why you got defensive about that question. Pretty obvious, you know. Like I said, I sincerely doubt that this is Anthony Magnaposco's approach because it may be. I haven't watched very many of his videos, but he people get really annoyed. And I don't see people like walking out on his interviews. But if he started framing questions like that, people would immediately go like, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> just, just conversation almost over and walk out on the interview. You know, like I said, play your cards closer to the vest. I know you don't believe in Christianity. I don't need to know it with the question. <laughs> I don't need, I, it's not a genuine question. It's not genuine inquiry. It's here is a detail that should challenge your faith. And you're saying here to listen to this detail. Doesn't this really challenge your faith? Doesn't this really, you know what I'm saying? It's not genuine inquiry. Sorry, it's really not. There you go. Those are, those are two so far. Maybe I'll do some more. I don't know. Not today, but maybe. I don't know.